Good morning. Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host. Um, as you can see, we have some goodies on the table and we're going to get into it because today is February the 1st and y'all know this is my time of year. But first, we're going to get to the meat of the live, which is today's topic is the pick me agenda. Okay. And we're going to talk about the opposing side of the pick me agenda, whatever this whole pick me agenda is supposed to be. And then we're going to get off into what are into these baskets that I have that are only $60. Okay. So yes, I, I know you like, wait a minute, what? $60? Yes, baby, $60. Because I'm trying to make sure everybody be in room on five. And for those of you all who are all around the city saying, where can I get a basket? Where can I get stuff for Valentine's Day? Stop acting silly. You already know at the PPG store, we have everything that you need to make sure that your whole day, night, weekend is everything that you want it to be. But I know a lot of y'all like to get on your page and you're trying to, you know, find out where to go get the goods from and you do your thing. But for those of y'all that are here in this group, you already know you should be supporting the people who feed you on a regular basis, who make sure your bedroom is on fire on a regular basis. Yes, I'm saying it. And yes, we do ship nationwide. So let's get into this pick me agenda. This weekend, I made a decision after prayer, of course, to divide the group. I made the decision to divide the group into two separate groups, one for women who are engaged and married. And the other group, which is this one, will remain a group for sex talk, which is going to be sexual health and wellness, which is going to be things that you can do to set your bedroom on fire, make sure it's the way it needs to be. Uh, which will be the questions and the answers and all of this type of stuff that the group originally was anyway. The reason that everybody enjoyed tuning in anyway, the group will go back to its original intent. I understood when I was reading the comments, a lot of the ladies said it's kind of hard to go from sex talk sucking and fucking to being this good noble wife. I completely understand it. Some of you are not there yet. I get it. Some of you have been there, done that. Now you own some other shit. I get it. So I made the decision to separate the group. A lot of ladies were concerned because I'm not engaged. I'm not married, but I still want to get that knowledge that you got to offer. Well, you have two options. You have YouTube that you can go to. Subscribe and you will get all of the videos that the wives are getting or you can enroll in wife school Those are your options Then I seen on there which I thought was so funny All other women over on the other side and you done left us over here with the side bitches No, 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 no. It's just that I understood that These ladies needed a space. They they needed a space because you got to be in a space where you could get wise counsel. Every time you present an issue about your marriage, you got all these single women who never been married, never committed to nothing, don't know nothing about nothing other than gimme, 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 wanting to tell you about your marriage. So what I understand is even in having a platform, I still have a responsibility. Okay? Um, so that's why I made the decision. So over the weekend, I was just thinking and I was reflecting. And when the lady said that I was pushing the pick me agenda, I'm not going to say that I was offended because I really wasn't offended. But it did put me into deep thought. Because if you have been searching about what a pick me is, a pick me is a woman most times that is willing to do anything for marriage. Um, who basically has an agenda for marriage, who will conform 
in all types of ways for marriage. And it really made me think about the live that I did when I was talking about being a Proverbs 31 woman. Remember, I said that was not about being a wife. If you have not watched it, I urge every woman to watch it because it is a it was I, I believe, honestly, that that was one of the most powerful lives that I have ever done. I honestly believe that I told my husband that was God all up in it. But not to get too churchy on you. It made me think. How is it that you can feel like I'm teaching women to be a pick me because I am advocating for them to be good women? I'm not advocating for them to be a good win a, a good woman for a man. I'm advocating for them to be a good woman for themselves. Because the thing is, what we what we gotta understand is. Everything you do have a way of following you. Whether you want to, whether you want to admit it or not, every decision that you make for your life have a way of following you. When you decided to give your body to somebody, get in a relationship with somebody, to become a mother to a child to decide to go on certain jobs and work them. Every decision you make has a way of following you. I have always said that there is nothing that a man can do or anybody can do for that matter that will make me be anybody other than who I am. I see so many women, and, and the thing is, when I, I always think about, because I talk to my daughter about the city girl mentality all the time, and the thing is, at 21, it don't really bother me that you got a certain type of mentality because you're still a child. But when I see women in my age group and above with that same mentality, I'm like, wow. Because at that point, I understand that growth hadn't happened. Or I understand that hurt has happened and this is the end, the end result of just not caring anymore. Meaning you don't care about nothing. You don't care about other people and you don't even care about the way you present yourself to the world anymore. Which in turn follows you. Reputa re reputation follows you. And I know you have heard this before. I know you know that men can waddle in the ditch all day long. He just going to be a drunk, man, wild man, whatever, wild in the ditch. And he going to get up the next day and he going to still be a man. I know you have heard this before. But you as a lady, you can do it. But your outcome is not going to be the same. You will be the thought. You will be the whore. You will be the slut, the cum bucket, the this, the that, the, the jump off, the, the whatever. And a lot of women say, I don't care about that. They talked about God. They talked about Jesus. I don't care what people think about me. I don't care about this, this, that, the other. And when you have formed that type of mentality, when you just don't care and nothing has value to you anymore, you have become trifling. Oh, I know that stepped on some toes. I had to break this word down. The word trifling comes from the root word trifle. Trifle simply means not to care. Go look it up for yourself. Trifle is the root word to trifling. Trifle means not to care. 
when you was a young child and you didn't clean your room and your mama walked in and she said, this room looks trifling. She simply meant that it looked like you don't care about it. When you go out in the world and you represent yourself in a, a manner to where it looks like you don't care about anything. At this point, you have become trifling. Trifling. Someone who is or one of the following. Dishonest. Shady. Secretive. All talk without following through. Not trustworthy. In general, a lack of ethics or general morals. Also known as worthless. Who the fuck want to marry that? Who the fuck want to be engaged to that? Who the fuck want to make that their girlfriend? Who want that? And then you, want, you got the nerve to get upset with me because I'm bringing it to your attention that the way you are carrying yourself is trifling. If that's how you want to live your life, fine. But do not discourage other people for wanting better. There's nothing wrong with being single. There's nothing wrong with living your best life. There is nothing wrong with having fun. But I believe that everything can be done in decency and order. I believe that you can still have a certain level of class when you step on the scene. Because at the end of the day, a lot of y'all own this, I don't need a man, I don't need a man, I don't want a man, I don't want a woman, I don't want nobody, I don't want... Y'all own this kick right now. For the moment. But once you done got it out your system, remember when I was telling you the things that you do follow you? Now that you done got it out your system, I done did the brunches every Sunday. I done did the, the Bella Noche every Wednesday. I done did the Playboys every Sunday. I done been on the scene of every club when they open up. I done been at every event when they, as soon as they announced that they got something going on, I'm there. It's nothing wrong with having a social life. It's nothing wrong with enjoying your life. But again, like I said, when you step on the scene, you need to do it with dignity and class. When you decide that I'm ready to pull it all back and get me together because I'm tired of paying these bills by myself. My children need a male figure in their life. I need somebody here to, uh, to, to fix on some shit when it break down because I'm realizing that I my, my home warranted and expired on my house and I don't have the resources to just go out there and fix my air conditioning system when it goes out. And I'm realizing that I need some motherfucking help around here. Now I'm ready to pull it all back. But the reputation, she ain't shit. Trifling. Don't give a fuck about nothing. You got to be mindful. The only thing that I was explaining to ladies with that whole Proverbs, 31, and then I said we could just remove the whole Proverbs 31. The only thing that I was explaining to ladies was how to be a good woman. And if that means because I choose to want to get up and be a good woman, that I'm a part of the pick me agenda, then so fucking be it. Because I'm a woman first. Not only do I represent myself, I represent my husband, I represent my children, I represent my business. I represent everything that is attached to me. See, when I decided to go to the makeup classes to learn how to do my own makeup, it was because I knew that I'm going to have to be out there in the world dealing with people and talking to people. And I have to make sure that I'm on point at all times. So I had to invest that money into myself. 
Anytime that I go and invest in a class to better myself, it's because I'm thinking about one thing and I'm thinking that, that one thing is my future. That's all I'm thinking about. That's it. When a woman chooses marriage, she's doing it because she understands the importance of legacy. I don't see too many single people handing shit down to their children. I don't. When I was growing up, I was a young girl that was very observant. And I paid attention to the people that I knew that were married. See, mommy had five kids. Six were kidding. And everybody was married. Except one. But he, he got married later on. And these people were my examples. I didn't say my mom was my example. My mom was a single woman. I didn't, I didn't gave you the story already on it. In other words, I observed her and I learned what not to do. Because I didn't want that life. I didn't want to be handling my family in frustration. I didn't want to be having to deal with all these different people just to get shit done. I don't, I don't enjoy being in that people's face like that. To having to be running game and all of this shit to, to make shit happen. So I knew that even though she was my first teacher, I knew that I had to take those lessons with a grain of salt. Meaning that the things that I can utilize, use them. But the things that I knew wasn't going to do me no good in life, I had to let that shit go. I had a woman that I just did a sex coaching session with and she told me, my mama taught me to lie. My mama taught me to constantly lie. To ask for way more than what I needed. To say the bill was more than what it was. To constantly cry broke. To constantly have a need. To constantly have my hand out. To constantly beg. My mama taught me that. And her words was, if I'm constantly not keeping it 100 with the people that I'm meeting in hopes that it will turn into something, how can I expect them to keep it 100 with me? Because what you got to understand is God sent you to you. A lot of y'all, that's going to go over your head. He sent you to you. Meaning, if you out there in the world presenting yourself, trifling, this is what you can expect to attract. Trifling. He sent you to you. If your whole talk is how you don't give a fuck, guess what? He sent, <laughs> he's sending you to you. He ain't going to give a fuck either. He ain't gonna care. This message is for the single women. All of the single women that were saying, I still want to be able to get the information. I still want, I appreciate. This is for the single women. This is for the young girls who ain't got a mama that can talk them the right way. This is for the women that sponges right now and they ready to soak up and absorb because they see the way they doing shit ain't getting them nowhere. That's who this message for. God gonna send you to you. That's the truth. See, when you transparent, the person that you with ain't got no problem with being transparent. He send you to you. Back to what I was saying. All of my role models, the people that I look up to, that I aspire to be like, they all were married. They all were homeowners. They were all considered to be middle class. They all had careers. They all did very well for themselves. They carried themselves with decency and class. They was not out in the streets fighting and getting court cases. You know, like I grew up watching my mama have to go to court a lot for fighting. She wasn't in court for stealing and all. She was always in court for fighting. And now it's about 10. It has something to do with a man. Because she would fight you about your man. Because she was bold. She was bold like that. And I'm saying that because a lot of y'all have the mentality that Claudette had. My mama. Oh, you cheat? I'm going to cheat back. 
I'ma follow your lead. I do what I do what my head do. My thing is, even if you feel like that, keep that shit to yourself. Don't say it. Even if you feel like that, everybody don't need to know that's how you feel. You got some shit that you're going to have to just, some shit you just need to keep in you. Everybody don't need to know all the fucked up shit that you think in your mind. But y'all got the internet now and it's my page and I post what I want to post on my page. Yes, rightfully so, you do. But remember, it follows you. It follows you. The mentality. People don't forget that you got that mentality. I saw people have shit. Have things to be able to offer their children. Be able to get their children cards and stuff as teenagers. They children, you know, and, and it's not about materialistic stuff. I saw them bring their, their, their families to church. It was just certain things that I saw them do. And guess what? The things that they were doing, it looked like it was working for them. Did I say their household was perfect? No. Did I say their marriage was perfect? No. But it wasn't that shit that I was seeing every day. It wasn't that. So with that being said, if you don't walk away with nothing else from this life, I want you to understand that when you have this whole city girl mentality, when you young and you 18, 19, that's who that shit for. That is for them babies. But when you start transitioning to becoming a real woman, your song change. The way you re represent yourself change. Even if you got to get up a few minutes early to get yourself together, you will do that because you understand that you're going out into the world and you representing yourself. When I started talking about people look over the bruised up fruit that don't look all appealing and they go get the pretty ones. The first thing that was said was, oh, she teaching y'all to be a pick me. No, 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 no. I'm not teaching you to be a pick me. I'm teaching you to have some fucking get up and go some care about yourself. To care about something because when you don't care, trifling. You may not like the word of choice, but the definition, it ain't lying. To not care, it ain't lying. It ain't lying. A lot of y'all walking around wanting something that you're not willing to get. I just saw a young man and his thing was, I get so tired of women calling me and broke and putting us down because we can't afford shit that they can't afford for themselves. I'm like, wow. So because you want something and you can't afford it and he can't afford it, he got to go into the go into the he ain't shit category because he can't afford something that you want. Oh, but you can go out here and get a man that's selling this, that, the other. They keep money who went on the scene, who balling, who got this, 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 that, the other. And he can provide those materialistic things for you. But guess what? That's the one that ain't shit. <laughs> if you want me to be honest with you, that's the one that's going to make your heart hurt. That's going to give you a hard time. Because he got all of that flash and all of this here that got your attention. And guess what? The same way you competing, they competing too. And them type of men, they ain't trying to do too much changing because they know all y'all out there competing. In other words, women come a dime a dozen. It's so many of y'all out there trying. I ain't got to do shit. They choosing me. And they choosing me knowing I got somebody. They don't care about being one of the other ones. As long as I can get them some materialistic shit. Because at the end of the day, she a real ass bitch give a fuck about a nigga. She don't give a fuck about me no way. I know that. So guess what? She trifling, I'm trifling too. We attract each other. All right. I'm done with it. I'm done with it. Pink Pussy, two days, February 1st. Buy one, get one free. In store and online.
in store and online February the 1st only. Today only. Okay? Today only. Don't come here tomorrow. Don't come here Friday. Don't come today only. Why are we doing this? Because we're trying to get our stuff started. We jump starting our promotions for Valentine's Day. We jump starting. So if your agenda was to get it for Valentine's Day, buy one, get one free. You got two of them. You got one for the whole week of Valentine's Day, week after, however you want to do it. This basket, $60. $60. I pulled everything that's in it other than the teddy bear. All right, so I don't know if you remember the suspender stockings, but the suspender stockings are the ones that have your thighs out and they crotchless, real cute. Comes with a set of suspender stockings. Chocolate candy that says, let's fuck. Make sure I got everything. Blindfold by Fetish. Handcuffs by Fetish. Anal ease. Anal lube. They go together. Anal ease, anal lube. Massage candle. Dickalicious. Love me lotto tickets. I think it's like, what, 12 of them in here? Yeah, it's a dozen, 12 of them. And a cock ring to help keep that dick up. Yes, yes, yes. All for $60, okay? I will be taking a picture of this basket. It will be posted to the website, okay? Um... And the, the the teddy bears with the roses, they will be in at the end of the week. I will be doing a live once they come in as well. Um, please like and share. Uh, this live will be on YouTube within like the next hour or so. And I think that is going to conclude this live today. You all be blessed. You all be safe. And let me add this before I end. If you're a person that gets easily offended, because I was just talking to somebody about this um, when I was doing the sex coaching, because she was telling me how she get easily offended. And I had to explain to her, when you get offended, sometimes there's a certain level of truth to what's being said. That's why you're getting offended. That's why. So if by me saying... That, that being trifling is this unashaded, secretive, um, not following through, not trustworthy, a general lack of ethics, no morals, aka worthless. If that offended you, it's because you know deep down somewhere inside of you, it's the level of truth to it. But go back and watch the video. If you type in Sharonda Parker, Proverbs 31, if you type that in, go back and watch that video and help yourself. You don't have to live like this. You don't have to be like this. You don't have to. Go help yourself. Because I know we all don't have role models and we all don't see examples of people doing it. I know this to be true. But the difference between you and me is back then, they ain't had the internet. They didn't have examples so I could just click a button and see some shit different than what I see around me, my circumstances. You different. You could click on the button. You could see Sharonda Parker. You could see all these other black women that's influencers that's out there doing their shit. I think pretty much all of them carry themselves pretty decent, if you ask me, other than a few of them. A, a, a small few. But for the most part, most of these influencers, they understand the responsibility that come along with their platform and they are very, very cautious about the way they represent themselves. It's not that nobody walking around trying to be fake or phony because that's not what it is. But at the end of the day, when you represent yourself to the world, you want to represent yourself in the best light, in the best way possible. And if you have not been taught that, you learned it today from Sharonda Parker. You always represent yourself well. Always. All right. Be blessed.